Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the neuromuscular system and the sliding filament theory. We will help you understand how the nervous and muscular systems work together, how the body protects muscle, and how a muscle contracts using the sliding filament theory. Let's get started. Skeletal muscle contracts when electrical nerve impulses from the nervous system, known as action potentials, travel down a specialised nerve called a motor neuron. A single motor neuron and the block of muscle fibres which it controls is called a motor unit. When the motor neuron is stimulated, all of the connecting fibres are immediately activated. This is known as the all or none law. The strength of a contraction is determined by the number and size of the motor units that are recruited. To produce a really forceful contraction, all motor units in the muscle are recruited at the same time. In isolation, a single muscle twitch cannot produce a great amount of force. Wave summation is an increase in muscle contraction strength based on how rapidly a muscle is stimulated. Muscles that are repeatedly stimulated are not able to relax between repetitive stimulations, which creates strong contractions due to the effect of each wave being added to the previous one. Spatial summation is the way in which we activate multiple fibres across a whole muscle to produce force with a controlled contraction. Different fibre groups are fired in succession. In order to control our contractions, such as knowing the difference in force between shaking someone's hand and opening a stubborn jar, we have the ability to vary the produced force. This is known as gradation of contraction. This can be achieved in two ways. We can increase the frequency of stimulus, a bit like wave summation, and varying the number of motor units that are recruited. The neuromuscular system also has some other clever components designed to protect our muscles and maximise our activity. Muscle spindles are receptors sensitive to length change and rate of change in the muscle that sends this information to the central nervous system. Golgi tendon organs are also specialised sensory receptors that are sensitive to length change and rate of change in the muscle and can cause a muscle to relax in order to prevent excessive lengthening or stress. The collective process of neural stimulation that results in a muscle contraction is called excitation-contraction coupling. This includes the proposed process involving muscular filaments, more commonly known as the sliding filament theory. Here are the key steps that occur leading up to a skeletal muscle contraction. A nerve impulse arrives from the brain, triggering a muscle action potential. The action potential travels down the T-tubules, which triggers the release of calcium from within the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium then binds with troponin, removing the blocking action of tripomyosin, which exposes the crossbridge binding site for myosin. Once the myosin is able to attach to the actin, a contraction can take place via the cross-bridge cycle. The energised myosin heads pivot and bends, pulling the actin filament towards the centre of the sarcomere. This is called the power stroke. ATP then attaches to the myosin head, weakening the link and detaching it from the actin. Once the ATP is hydrolyzed, the myosin returns to the high energised cocked position ready to attach again. The continuous attachment and detachment of the cross bridge creates a ratchet mechanism that contracts and relaxes skeletal muscle. Although this happens at a microscopic level, it will be taking place throughout the whole muscle. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website 
www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.